and welcome from the continuing crazy sellers market here in Rhode Island. I'm Sandy Warner with Warner Realty Group and I keep getting the same questions over and over and over again um, and that is how is the equity that I'm going to gain in the sale of my home going to affect my taxes? So for you lucky people, I made a presentation for you to hopefully try to explain it a little bit better. Um, it's going in a little bit deeper than we've done on some past videos. Just a warning, I am not an accountant, I am not a CPA, I am a licensed attorney, I do know how to read um, documents, but everything we covered today should prompt you to make a call to your CPA or your financial advisor and help you understand what questions you want to ask them. So let's dive into our presentation. So the tax impacts of a sale. Many people are considering selling their properties right now to do what's called um, equity capture. Their houses have improved in uh, pricing, particularly in some areas of um, our state, which is Rhode Island. We're seeing this happen all over the state, but particularly in areas like Newport, Narragansett, Portsmouth, Tiverton, um, Warwick, West Warwick. Um, so a lot of people maybe that hadn't thought about selling before are saying, gosh, you know, now I should grab this equity out of the house. What are some things you want to think about to make sure that uh, the taxes aren't going to eat up any equity that you gain? What we're going to talk about is capital gains tax. And capital gains tax is a tax that the IRS in many states, Rhode Island included, will put on any uh, profit that you make out of your property. So capital gain is the amount you earn in the sale of your property that's greater than your basis or what you paid. And basis is affected by the cost of the property when you first bought it or when you inherited it, as well as any improvements and any maintenance that you did. And how do you know if the taxes make the sale impractical? I'm glad you asked. You have to kind of have some idea of what the taxes are going to be. So let's take a look at how you might find that out. First thing you want to do, here's our little note, ask your accountant and your financial advisor to help you with this. This information we're giving you is not professional advice, it's not legal advice, it's not uh, accounting advice. It's from me as a realtor because I realize that people get caught in this and I'm trying to get you to think about this before you get the house on the market and you get stuck in something that you, stuck paying more than you, you should pay. So the first thing we want to do is if you let your accountant know, but maybe you want to figure this out before you schedule an appointment. You can go look at IRS Publication 23. If you just Google that form, and um, we can actually attach it here too for you, it will walk you through how to figure out what your gain or your loss is going to be. For you to understand what the taxes are going to be, you have to figure out how much of the sale of your property might be subject to taxes. So this order of events might be, hey, you talked to a realtor, I, I had two listing appointments last week, and one of the things we talked about was what did I think the property would sell for, because then you know what it might be. So say you bought the house for $350, and your realtor says, oh, this would probably sell for about $650. From there, you can figure out what your net is what you get after paying the realtor, after paying your attorney, so on and so forth, and then how much of that is taxable. So as you can see, this is a worksheet in the IRS publication, and it helps you go through it. It's, it's how much money did you get? Uh, were there any, any uh, which there, there usually aren't any more, were there any, like, did you get a deal? Did you get an exchange for service? Um, did the buyer pay your real estate taxes? Um, did you do a right of first refusal? Anything like that is considered value in your property. And the next slide is um, calculating your seller's expenses. You have to pay a realtor. Does the realtor charge you for any advertising fees? Um, are there any legal fees? Yes, you have to pay an attorney to draft your deed for which you're going to transfer. Um, any points that any credits that you might give to the buyer uh, or any other costs and you can see this is going to walk you through figuring out your basis. The final slide is to figure out whether you have a gain or a loss. 
if you have a loss for purposes of our conversation today, you will not have a capital gains tax. This conversation and this tax only has to do with the tax impact of you making more than it costs. So how much tax will you pay? I found a really cool little calculator online. Um, it's, this is not a substitute for your CPA, but it's going to give you an idea. And if you go to, the link is right here in the page, it's at Nerd Wallet, and they do capital gains tax rates. Um, and the first thing they're going to have you figure out is, is it short term or long term? Um, if you only held this property for one year or less, and some people are already have gain. People who bought last year, uh, say for example in Newport, if you Newport, Rhode Island, if you bought last year, you have equity most likely this year. So some people are selling. Um, so if it's one year or less, it's going to be taxed as ordinary income, and what that means, it's going to be taxed at your rate, whatever your normal rate is. Um, if it's greater than one year, you're in a different tax bracket, and that's going to be based on, um, there are three tax brackets for 2020. You'll get 0% if you're under a certain income level. It's 15% if you're between, don't quote me on this, go to this site, they'll calculate it for you, but I think it's uh, between 40000 and 500000 you're at 15%. And if you make over the 500, sorry, 499000 it's 30%. Um, but you can go right here and it'll tell you this is what you're going to pay in taxes. So are there any options for you to maybe not pay all those taxes? Well, yes. If this is an investment property, if it's a second home that you're using as a rental property, why don't you look at Section 1031 of the IRS code? And this is Section 1031 ex refers to an actual section of the IRS code. Um, and there's an awesome YouTube channel out there um, by a company uh, who specializes in 1031 exchanges. They're called Acuit, which is spelled A-C-C-U-I-T. Here's a link if you want to just copy and paste this. Um, they go and they walk you through the Section 1031 exchange rules. Again, they're going to tell you right there they're not accountants. This is this. They don't know your personal situation. But if this is a second home for you and you are renting it out, you could sell it this year as long as you buy something new under the Section 1031 rules, which means within 130 days, uh, 180 days, and a lot of other rules, um, you could put off any taxes on any gain that you made for a while. Now, if you're selling your primary residence, uh, if it's you bought a home because you were going to move to Rhode Island, maybe the military moved you here, and now all of a sudden you're, you're, you, ha you decided to you want to purchase a home in your next duty station, um, Section 1031 doesn't qualify because Section 1031 only covers investment properties. However, there's kind of a cool exception to this. If you rented out a portion of your home, um, maybe you had a big home and you used Airbnb for one of the rooms, you could, with you know some careful advice and some, some good record keeping, you could uh, defer the taxes on a portion of that as long as you're going to reinvest it into something similar. Be careful with this. Talk to your accountant. Don't just assume you can figure this out. Another really cool fact pattern that we see a lot uh, in Rhode Island, in our resort towns, in Narragansett, in Westerly, in Newport, in Tiverton, in Little Compton, all of our beach towns, Bristol. Um, what if so? you came to Newport and you bought a home and you wanted to use it as an investment property and then you're going to retire here? This is common with military families, and this is common with people who are buying now with a future towards living in Rhode Island permanently. Well, here's a cool thing. So say you did that, and you did that five years ago or more because there's a five-year look-back period. Maybe you rented it for two years, and then you lived in it for three years, and now you want to downsize. Well, you can combine Section 1031 under the IRS code with the basic exclusions that we all get on our, our primary residence under Section 121 of the IRS code. Um, this is confusing. I get it. So, again, get professional advice on this one, but as long as the property was used as a rental for two years 
and I think that's even a minimal impact as long as you rented it for 14 days out of each year and as long as you own it for five years and you lived in it for three this says two ignore that that's a three then ta-da you can combine section 121 which is your your primary residence exclusions along with section 1031 for the years that you used it as a an investment property and you could conceivably purchase something else um, that you were going to use the same way so be thoughtful be careful in what you're doing get professional advice um, this video is just to make you think about ways that you could hold on to some of this equity that you, that you may gain and to make it possible for you to sell now and take advantage of this wild seller's market so Consider your tax burden if you're selling right now. If your real estate agent is not talking to you about this, are they doing you a service? Um, consult with a professional or if you're a DIYer and you want to know all this information before you call your CPA or, you, you know, you can do that. Look at IRS Publication 523 and use their, their worksheets there. Um, go and look at Nerd Wallet. They're good at um, helping you walk through these uh, they have calculators on there um, find out if you have any avenues to defer the taxes on your gain using a section 1031 um, and possibly shelter uh, some of those taxes for your primary residence that you did use as a rental under a combination of section 1031 and 121 if you want a real estate agent that understands this and can help guide you to the professionals that can help you hold on to some more of your money, call us here at Warner Realty Group. It's 401-236-8685 or check us out on the web at www.wrgri.com. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. If you have questions uh, or we can answer uh, any questions about what we talked about today, give us a call. We're happy to help. Have a great day and I hope you take advantage of this great seller's market.